Hi, my name is Nikki Varnish, and we're here in Second Life at UCS Ville, and I have with me Isabel Alvarez for a chat about Machinima for the volume Understanding Machinima uh, to be published by Continuum Press in October later this year. Uh, really happy to have you with me, Isabel. Um, Isabel has been involved in Machinima on numerous levels as curator, critic, journalist, artist, trainer, and teacher. And I really want to talk to you about some of the more high-profile events which you have been organizing about Machinima recently. Uh, Isabel, great to have you here. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Fantastic. Um, so I understand that in 2010, you were organizing these Machinima workshops for teenagers across France. Um, what were you trying to achieve in organizing these Machinima workshops for them? Yeah, uh, actually, as a curator, I showed many machinima programs a bit everywhere in France, but mm -hmm. most, most of the films I was showing, screening, were in English. And um, it, I don't mean that there is not a machinima scene in France, but it's still very underground and a bit amateur. So my first aim was to organize this machinima workshop to democratize this movement and to develop this way of expression in France. Also, the second aim why I wanted to make this machine in my workshops was that I realized in 2005 during the riots in France, uh, there was a guy, a young guy, who decided to give his point of view using a machinima. The name is The French Democracy by uh, Alex Chan. And actually, this movie made me understand that um, machinima can be seen as a way of expression and also as a way to give a voice to those who can't speak or who don't have a voice inside the media. So that's why I also wanted to uh, develop this movement in the suburbs uh, to create, um, uh, besides hip-hop, to create another way of expression and to show that uh, games are not um, only a mass consumption object but also a way to produce content. Yeah, that was a really famous machinima um, film, um, The French Democracy, right? Mm -hmm. And I think it made a huge impact as well with, um, not just with teenagers, but also with, um, you know, sort of ethnic minorities. I think the response yep. to this mission, I think, really touched a nerve. So, uh, do you think there's anything particular about this medium which could cause these teenagers to respond to, to, to Machinima or to these workshops or this, to, to this medium in particular? I mean, were they enthusiastic? Were they, were they attracted to the oh. medium? Yeah, uh, actually they were very uh, enthusiastic. Uh, what I saw uh, mostly was a pleasure, a pleasure to create avatars, pleasure to create scenes, and also to direct the uh, virtual actors. Um, of course, depending on their age, they didn't really divert the tool. They used a, a, a machinima software to create a machinima. But still, what was interesting is the relationship between creating an avatar that is far from perhaps their identity, but then recording their voice and putting their voice on these avatars because it allowed them to talk about their life, their experiences, um, but uh, having this very special um, relationship to their um, uh, avatar and identity, I don't know. Uh, and also, they were, um, they were surprised by the fact that they can tell a story with a game, and also very enthusiastic by the thing that uh, in games, when the gameplay is not very good, you always know what is going to be after. And what, um, what they, they liked with Machinima is that they uh, decide what is going to be after, what is the next step, what is the next move. They decide the story. Yeah. I mean I think that's very powerful, this idea of agency, 
And I think that's also a very crucial part of Mashima, being able to use the game and the game engine to create your own narrative that is indeed powerful. Do you see that as the main advantage of teaching Mashima to these kids? You know, the idea of agency, um, being able to see opportunities in gameplay, the idea of being able to forge your own avatar, uh, identity in terms of your avatar, your appearance, your voice, you know. Um, do, do you see that as, the, as a, 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 a major effect or a major advantage? of this medium? I think it's important, um, as they use games a lot, uh, that the first uh, uh, entertainment in, in France, they use it a lot, and it's nice to help them to understand how a game is built, then that uh, game development can be an opportunity as a job, for example, and I also wanted to show them that um, making machinima, some people found jobs in the game industry, but not only in the game industry, also in the cinema industry. Machinima makers were uh, hired uh, to create cinematics in game industry. So <clears throat> the purpose is also that, to show that there are some possibilities with games, and not only a way to consume, I would say. And also, um, what is interesting is to, they use video platforms every day. They play every day. So I wanted to show them uh, the links between their daily occupations and what they could produce. The other thing is also to show them how to collaborate inside the team, because when you are young, you're not really used to collaborate in, in a team, so it's quite good to, to, to show it also. I don't know if you listen to me. Yeah, no, no, I think... Um yeah, well, those, those are indeed, I mean, these are 21st century skills, basically. So, you, moving on from the, the the workshop for teenagers, I understand you also um, do Mashima events for um, for adults or for the gaming industries. Um, but in particular, um, this event which you were at in June last year, that's 2011, um, you, you, you were invited um, by this non-profit organization called Design the Future Now to participate in, the, in an event called Open Korea, uh, which is basically to get creative people from the gaming, communication, and marketing industries to think and experiment about new trends in communication and marketing. I think that sounded incredibly interesting, particularly when you, talked to, when you told me about how you then also designed this game prototype called ID Lab, uh, during which you have your guests um, select skills and tools to create an effective communication strategy for a given scenario. I understand the scenario for that evening was um, the topic of communication about eco-friendly means of transportation in Marseille. And the tool, of course, that you used was Mashima. So that was incredibly interesting. Um, tell me a little about the Mashima that was the end result of, of that event. What, did, what, what, what was, yeah. People were drinking, eating, while he's giving me some um, directions uh, to create this machine. So the idea was to speak about friendly means of transportation in Marseille. Actually, you have to know that uh, you have hills in Marseille, and people prefer often to put their bicycles uh, down inside the city more than on the top of the hill. So the idea of this movie was to teach tourists that if they return their bicycle in the top of the city, they can win points and then they can rent bicycle for free. So that was uh, the very little story beside the machinima. And the scene that we directed uh, live uh, for this open career was telling the story of a Belgian tourist who wants to uh, return his bicycle, and he's a bit not attacked, not aggressed, but somebody comes to him and tell him what he should do if he wants to get points, basically, very basically. 
if you want to have a, 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 a reward and, and then to be able to rent a, a bicycle for free in Marseille. So how many people were involved in this, in making this machine? And what program did you make it with? Okay, so uh, as we had only one hour, you have to imagine that all this event happened in perhaps three hours. Uh, the game ID Lab to, to create the strategy, then um, groups were created uh, in order to define some strategies and then we had this machinima uh, direction and we only had one hour so it was quite quick so I decided to use Movistar as a program and I was in front of the people we were almost 10 or 15 persons and again they were drinking uh, eating and telling me oh put some more trash because we we can't really realize that we are in Marseille or um, uh, put the red nose to the Belgian guy because of course we had some jokes about Belgian people anyway it was um, I, I used movie storm because um, it was easy to use and easy to make something in a very short time, <clears throat> even if the graphic design is kind of uh, a bit too much like uh, the scenes. Or, but um, he, for this kind of time constraint, it was good to good to use like that. And it was also a way to mix theory, uh, marketing strategy, game, and you know, in a kind of um, party time atmosphere, you know, not too much, we are not too much working, we are working, but we are doing something else, and we are having fun, that was the main purpose. Yeah, I think that, yeah, the most fascinating part of this, this exercise which you have just described is the idea that this is all taking place in a cocktail party, people are drinking, there is that very nice blend of work and fun and socializing and creativity as well. I think it's, it's extremely fresh. Um, yeah, what do you, you think know, was, we, we could have done mm -hmm. a, a movie or a short film, but it wouldn't have been the same because people were... Um, inside the movie making, but also outside at the same time. So it remains fun. That that is that is really interesting. It's, the, it's sort of edge as well of the machine and the avatar and the connection with that kind of the, the slippage between the physical and the virtual world. So, what do you think was the most valuable lessons um, in this exercise uh, or, or skills? Which they brought with them. I think that you know, we when we we need to um, conceive a strategy, we always have a lot of ideas, a lot of ideas of means, of techniques. But then, when you have to make it concrete, when you have to visualize, I think that Machinima really helps the people to simulate, to make a simulation of their ideas and to see if it's really possible. So for, for, for this experience, Machinima was used more as a simulation tool to see if your ideas are good, um, uh, if it can be realized or not, I would say. And then what was interesting also, but you don't need a Machinima for that huh, especially, but what was also interesting is also this uh, collective thinking uh, aspects because um, uh, for the, the game ID Lab, we uh, separated people into teams, trying to um, uh, create teams with uh, complementary skills. And then even for the, the machinima uh, making, we it was quite interesting to have so many directors, I would say. Uh, so many people trying to create the story live and to uh, design the scene live. And so also this collective thinking was uh, an interesting part of it. Mm. I think, yeah, again, you know, Mishima tends to 
to to to to be that sort of vehicle for collaboration and yeah, as you say, collective thinking, and also as a tool for visualization. And it's interesting how you've channeled uh, the, these two ideas and these skills um, into. In, in, into your task, which was basically about communication and marketing strategies, and in this particular um, event or the sort of context of the of the cocktail party in this um, in this very industry oriented um, situ scenario or situation. Um, mm -hmm. No, I think that's absolutely fascinating. And then I also know that you were inspired by the success of this um, to, and to use the same format as part of your pedagogy in teaching a course on, what, on web marketing in Saint Raphael, France, right? But we'll talk about that in the next section. So, Isabel, um, so we've talked about you um, and your machine workshops for teenagers, and then we moved on from that to Open Korea, which was um, an event for basically um, industry people in games, communications, and marketing. And, um, and we talked about the ID Lab prototype game. And so, basically, you were so inspired by that, you, you understand you, that you decided to use the same format um, to teach um, your course on web marketing at the University Institute of Technology in Saint Raphael in France. Um, I think that is a really interesting match, machinima and, and web marketing. So, could you talk about maybe how do you think th this medium fits in with your course with web marketing in particular? What were you trying to sort of um, teach by, yeah. by by using machinima for that? Yeah. Um, when you speak about web marketing nowadays, uh, you speak a lot about gamification, advert games, uh, social network, uh, social games, and um, so there is for me a link between uh, a very strong link between marketing and games nowadays. And also, when you talk about machinima, you talk about mashups or game diversions, and I think that it can be linked to transmedia uh, techniques, uh, you know, uh, that we use in marketing to uh, tell stories and to keep clients. Uh, and so I thought that machinima could be um, a, a good way to visualize a marketing strategy for the students and also because uh, <clears throat> these students are not aimed to become managers they are going to execute other people's ideas because they are going to be web developers or graphic designers and often they don't have a, a global view of what they are doing they are doing a 3D picture, or they are doing a website, or they are doing an image. But often they don't have a global view of uh, what what they are doing are using for. So I thought that for once it could be nice to begin with ideas like gamification, advert gaming, and then to push them to. Um, imagine a marketing strategy using gamification techniques and then tell a story because we talk a lot about storytelling in marketing nowadays huh? because if you want uh, people buy you have to tell them very seducing series um, so I wanted to help my students to uh, make this um, uh, parkour in ideas, to have ideas, to make them concrete, and then to tell a story, to see if the ideas are good or um, realizable. Yeah, I think it's the, it's the idea of, again, using or manipulating or transplanting the, 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 the concept of the game, as you say, gamification, right? into communication strategy um, and into um, visualizing or putting together this whole interaction between web, print, physical, you know, virtual space, mobile systems. Um, how did your course convene? Yeah. Uh -huh. Go on. Oh, sorry. Uh, I, I also wanted to, to show to my students that 
they are often uh, hardcore players and they play to massively multiplayer games. And I wanted to show them how nowadays marketers use the techniques that were born in this type of persistent games to create a community, to listen to the community, and then to give them the content that they want and to make them participate and to make them recommend the game. And, uh, so using a game engine to talk about uh, game techniques or marketing techniques that are related to games, you know, it's like a, a mise en abyme of the thing. Um, how would you assess the, the course and how would you assess the value of Machinima in teaching this, this course? I mean, do you see it as a tool or do you see it as um, a conduit or do you see it as a vehicle for something else? Do you see it as, as you know, valuable in itself to teach skills um, inherent in making Machinima? Yeah, uh, 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 but I think I, I already said it, so perhaps I will repeat myself. But yeah, uh, for, for this course, I saw Machinima more like a tool, more like a simulation tool than anything else. But also, um, I know that these students, they are uh, learning 3D, they are learning animation, but you know, uh, for example, they spend one year to create a ball or to make move a, a square. And I wanted to show them that they have some very easy to use tools uh, that are not taught at schools. You don't learn machinima in, in French schools. Perhaps the only school where you can learn machinima is Super Info Game, so it's a gaming school. And now we have some good machinima that comes from this school, but it's still very experimental. Um, so what I hope is that to be able to to show documentation of this experimentation and perhaps to um, to show it as a new um, uh, opportunity uh, for universities, but still it's an experiment and, and I need to work on it. Yeah, yeah, um, we, we all do, but I think the, the hope is there, the vision is there, um, and hopefully, you know, the, the will um, is there from our colleagues and from and other educators. And I'm going to do it mm -hmm. again in okay. 10 days. Uh, oh, so, uh, uh -huh. The same course. And, yeah, the same course. Uh, so, you know, this experiment, uh, uh, I give my course uh, about gamification mm -hmm. and uh, at the game in the morning. Then we play the ID Lab game. Then they work on mind maps and then they, they shoot a, a machinima. And I hope that the result will be less experimental and, and more interesting and, and that I will be able to um, communicate on it and to show it to my colleagues. And yeah. Well, we, I, the, the to spread the message, exactly. I look forward yeah. to, to having the update from you as to how the second, the repeat of this, of this course yeah. goes. Thank you so much, Isabel, for talking to, to me today <clears throat> um, Ooh, about machine learning. was a bit hard for me, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, yeah, but uh, yeah, no, this is, this has been fantastic and thank you so much again. Um, and you know this interview, I'll transcribe this interview for the volume for the Understanding Machinima volume, and hopefully that would be, you know, be another way of getting the message out there as well. <laughs> and, uh, 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 of course, uh, the, the last time I did a Machinima workshop was, uh, was with an art school in Cambrai, and the result was very different because all the students, they divert the Machinima and, and did very very original things. For example, there is a machinima that is a queer machinima. You know, it, it begins with um, a man character and it becomes a woman and then 
the same on the contrary. There were two installations. Um, there was also um, some, uh, oh, I don't know how to say that in English. Uh, <laughs> they, they created a machinima using different layers of movies, uh, superposition of movies. Anyway, they really diverted the idea of machinima. So it was a very mm -hmm. different use of the tool. Mm -hmm. no, I think that, yeah. of course, of course. But there, there is huge potential for this, and obviously the volume only scratches the surface, but that's the exciting part. There is much more to come.